On this episode of High Impact Garage, we're going to tune a Weber carburetor to pass smog. So in our one of our most recent videos, Dave's truck got a new engine. And uh, that engine we decided we wanted to make it a smog legal Weber carb swap. Now, that means that we're gonna retain as many of the emissions control devices as we possibly can. And basically, that means we have to retain all of the auxiliary emission control devices. So everything on the label is now still present on this truck, but we are running a Weber carburetor. So to tune a carburetor properly, um, we're going to do this with a 5 gas analyzer. Why do we do with a 5 gas analyzer? <laughs> oh, lets us know our COs, our HCs, and our NOx, and pretty much all the gases that the emission tester is going to be looking for. Exactly, just like DJ said, just exactly like what he said. The 5 gas gives us the ability to be 100% accurate, no guesswork. No pulling spark plugs and kind of going, oh, is this lean? Is this rich? Uh, Ethanol-based fuels, the spark plugs are going to look definitely different than what you would have with pre-ethanol gas. So the truth is, this is going to get us where we need to be. But the first thing we need to do is warm up our not only our test equipment, but the vehicle. So let's get that warmed up and going. so we're getting up to temperature um, we're gonna be uh, we're almost middle of the gauge let's see what this is re okay so if you take a look our hydrocarbons are down to 100 and dropping carbon monoxide is also dropping so our jetting on our main is probably about right but you'll watch here in a second as soon as that now we're back to idle you're gonna watch that number come right up on our hydrocarbons So here in Nevada, these are the numbers we have to pass by. Our minimum carbon monoxide number needs to be at least 1.2% or lower, and 220 parts per million of hydrocarbons or lower. So that's 1981 or newer, this is a 1982. So what we're first probably going to do is lean out the idle jet, idle adjustment, and see how that goes. So the basic idle adjustment screw on a Weber DGV is right there. That's your Weber idle adjustment for your idle mixture. And then this over here, that is your idle speed screw. So the first thing we're probably going to want to do is we're going to want to turn in our idle screw. Um, Weber carburetors, they prefer less than one and a half turns on the idle screw and less than two turns on the idle mixture screw. If you need more than two turns to get it to idle right, you need to either upsize the idle jet or maybe have a vacuum leak. Um, the other thing is less than two turns on the idle speed screw because we don't want to be pulling out of the main circuit when we're doing this. So I'm going to turn this down and we're going to adjust. I'm going to turn this down and we're going to see what happens with our uh, numbers. I got that turned down about a half a turn. Let's see what it does on the numbers. All right, so here's where we're at. Carbon monoxide, 0.37%, which is within spec. Hydrocarbons is 203 parts per million, which is acceptable. acceptable. It's a little on the upper end, but it should pass. I was hoping for a longer video, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect it to drastically drop after a quarter turn on the mixture. I was hoping we would be pulling jets out and messing around with that. That's just how well these carbs are set up from the stock. 
Um, yeah. Um, yeah, this, this car is set up perfect for this engine. Now we gotta go prove it. Yeah, so, yeah, let's make some, I'm gonna make a couple of little adjustments. I'm gonna bring the idle speed up just a shade, and then uh, go from there. So anyway, we're over here at AutoZone right now on our way to the smog shop. We had to go get some return springs because this thing kept revving up to 2,500 on our way over. Uh, so anyway, put a valve return spring on it, and uh, now let's hope it works. All right, now we're idling pretty good. I think we'll bring it up in RPM for a little bit, and then bring it down. Nice. Perfect. All right, so I got the smog certificate, so this passed smog, but we're having an issue with the throttle spring. All right, so this is one of my big gripes, everybody knows this, on Weber carburetors, and that is back here, the throttle return spring. So that throttle return spring bracket there is usually a point of problem because Weber's tend to have this issue where they get the, the uh, throttle gets stuck. The issue at hand is that the throttle will end up um, hanging and you'll have to tap it down to get it to come down. Um, that's a big problem um, because if the idle doesn't come down then you're at risk of it dieseling. So um, running an adequate Throttle return spring is really, really, really important on these carburetors. The Hitachis seem to be perfectly fine on it, um, but the Webers do tend to have a need for a little bit stiffer throttle return spring. So now that we've got this through smog, DJ's going to take it for a drive, see if it squares up, and uh, then I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Yeah, I'm actually amazed it didn't take any custom tuning. So you didn't really get to see me drill any jets or any of that, but can't ask for anything better than stock rebuild, throw a carb on, and got it through emissions. <laughs> All right, so on, on another day, we'll talk about tuning one of these silly Weber carburetors. Uh, maybe we'll do a rebuild episode or something. I don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, go out and make your own Datsun run right. Yeah, maybe uh, one of these days we'll get to pull these uh, jets out and we'll show you how these work.